makes contact. The boxer, for, that, for whatever reason, wants to soften the blow. Pulling a punch is not the same as a sucker punch. A sucker punch is one that you let, you let fly when your opponent is off guard. The motivation for a sucker punch is to embarrass your opponent. But in the world of etymology, or the meaning of the English language, these two expressions take on a different meaning. To pull a punch means that to soften the blow when telling the truth. To suck a punch someone with words means that you embarrass someone when they least expect it. Jesus neither pulled a punch nor drew a suck a punch. He just let the truth land where it needed to land. After feeding 5,000 with food and word, Jesus and his disciples went to Capernaum. And our scripture text says that the people hijacked a few boats across the lake to search for Jesus. Well, maybe they didn't hijack the boats. The owner may have given them a free ride. When they finally found Jesus, they asked him two questions and made one profound request. It is those three that I want to examine today. When they arrived on the other side of the lake at Capernaum, they found Jesus, and knowing that his disciples had taken the boat without him, they first asked, how did you get here? That question, how did you get here, struck me. It reveals the truth about their lack of belief in Jesus as their long-awaited Messiah. It was an icebreaker <coughs> kind of question, something thrown out to open up their conversation with a man they knew nothing about. And Jesus didn't pull any punches in answer to them either. He did not soften the blow. You just came here because you want another free meal. You don't believe in me. Mm, ouch! It's not a sacrifice. It's just the truth. And the truth sometimes hurts. The worldwide Christian church claims to have 2.18 billion members. I wonder how many are just in it for the free meal and don't really believe in Jesus Christ. You do know that some so-called Christians are just looking for free meals. They may have joined the church for the social connection. Loneliness attracts a lot of folks to the church. Or they join the church not for the worship services, but for the social services. Free food, a handout to pay a meal, free babysitting service on Sunday morning so they can sleep in. A free picnic now and then, a free bus trip, a free burial when it's time for you to cross over to the other side. Our flesh enjoys so many benefits of belonging to the church that we sometimes lose sight of the real reasons why we are here. Jesus is still making the same accusation today. You just came here because you want another free meal. Uh, you don't believe in me. And it's up to each of us to examine our own motivation for belonging to the church of Jesus Christ. It ought to be less about what we get out of it and more about what we put into it. The second question they asked was even more revealing than the first. When Jesus told them that they should be less concerned with their bellies and more concerned with eternal life and their Messiah, they asked him this question. What do we do to satisfy God? These were Jews who lived according to the commands and rituals of the Mosaic law. They were covenant keepers with God, or so they claimed. And yet they were asking, how do we please God? Let me ask you the same question. How do you please God? Do you please God by refusing to share your faith with your friends and neighbors? Do you please God by skipping church twice a month because two Sundays are nothing. Do 
Do you please God by skipping Sunday school and Bible study because you already know enough about the Bible? Do you please God by quitting the cry because your feelings 